Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God and the Most High. This is the night the Lord has made. We will rejoice because not only do we have a choice, but it is required. <laughs> People still living out of how they feel. Decisions. Decision making out of feeling, emotional making. Amen. Trouble, dangerous. Oh, glory. Utara via roho shiri bikira boko sandu kasia kashantaka. Lufia o raha sandu ki polo boko sia papa. Mahatakasi. A while ago, the Lord gave me a vision. I have shared this multiple times, and it was three whirlwinds. And the first whirlwind that came, came into the country, into the globe. And it began to peel back like you peel back a sardine can. And in this peeling back, it was for the purpose of exposing I want to call that unmasking also. We're going to talk more about unmasking tonight. And the second world when that came, and when it hit the United States and the globe, it began to release provision. So the first one was peeling back and exposing. The second one was releasing prosperity, releasing provision. But it didn't land on everyone. It only landed on those that were in position. And then the third world when I saw come, came and took the people. It was the rapture. It took the people off the earth and brought them home. And I want you to know that we are the first whirlwind that came to expose it's still exposing, but the second whirlwind has come. And it's going to be re beginning to release provision and prosperity and an increase of the anointing. You know, God increases the anointing during times of chaos. So the world will become more chaotic and the body of Christ will be more blessed. All this is a preparation for not only the return of the Lord. Remember, the Lord will return first through his body. And then he will return. So that means that there must be a greater sign and wonder of his presence and his glory. But provision is coming. When God increases the anointing, so does provision. And there is a place where, again, he is trying to get individuals from the body into the army. He will bless and prosper the army. Does everybody understand that? He will set new strategies. Things won't be the same that they will be. We're not entering a new season. We're entering a new era. Hear what the Spirit says. He's going to ask us to do things that are a little bit different. He's going to shake our nests, ask us to go deeper, so that not only can we carry His glory and His power, but release His prophetic words that He is bringing into the earth. We will be the salt of the earth. We will be the light of the earth like never before. He is putting together the earlier and latter rain. All of this has been a preparation for such a time as this right now. But there's got to be a place where we're able to sense God's unction. His voice, his leading. We've got to come to a place to where 
we are more awakened and more alert. Where our relationship with him is the most important thing. People are still using God for restoration when he's requiring relationship. Most people don't even know they're using God. They just believe if they can get right with God, then all things can happen. No, he requires relationship. Getting right with God is relationship. It's not just going to church and learning the word. It's more than that. It's having a personal, intimate relationship where you know his unction, his voice, his leading. Where you're willing to look for and search out conviction. Where you're willing to accept at any moment, at any time, counsel, correction, and direction. Amen. Without offense, without bucking, and start bowing. He's looking for individuals that are surrendered and no longer live out of their head or out of their emotions, but out of the spirit because he is the head. Emotional life, life's decisions led by emotion are a constant battle. We are constantly influenced by voices, by presence, they release an emotion in our atmosphere. They promote things for you to be disobedient, rebellious. And reposition us into a place where the enemy has access then. You know, I was sharing with someone today. Uh, we had some visitors that came by, and uh, I don't remember what we were talking about. But they were talking about the battle and what's going on, this, that, and whatever, and so forth. And the one thing I shared with them, I said, you know what? I used to battle for the dope. I fought like crazy to go get high. In fact, I was willing to die to get high. I lived a life, was in love with, and was married with drugs. I was willing to let everything go to get high. Didn't care about the consequences. That same thriving desire to do the things that were wicked should be the same thriving desire we should do for the righteous. We should be fighting that hard for the presence of God. If you don't leave here with a six-pack, you ain't worshipped hard enough. <laughs> if your gut doesn't hurt, you ain't sung hard enough. He asks us to reach out to him. It's amazing how many people quit and give up. How many of y'all know that the enemy knows when God's about to release something? And then people give up. And they miss what God just released. See, you must catch the anointing. You catch it. It doesn't just come to you, it comes through you. You must catch it. It's not an area where you're looking for a feeling, you're looking for power. It's the power of God. All of a sudden a boldness comes on you. And you want to choke every devil. Amen. It's a righteous anger. See, but when you miss it, you become wimpier. And that's where the word says, my spirit is willing, but my flesh is weak. Why? Because people are allowing their flesh and their soulish emotions to overtake. They can't even come out of themselves because they're still looking at themselves. Their thoughts are constantly, what about me? What about me? What about my circumstances? What about this? What about See, that's not ministering to the Lord. You're ministering to yourself then. 
we must get to a place where we're ministering to him. It doesn't matter about me anymore. It doesn't matter what I need from him. It doesn't matter whether he releases it or not. It doesn't matter what he's doing in my life. None of that matters. What matters is that he knows that I love him enough not to ask for anything when it comes time to ministering to him. It's like swimming upstream. You fight and fight and fight until you hit the calm water. Then there's a refreshing. But if you don't fight, you don't get. You'll miss it every time. You'll never get there. And you'll have one foot in the outer court and one foot in darkness. And it's just a matter of time where the enemy's going to take you out. Because the closer you're in the tabernacle, the harder it's in to get you out. Amen? Amen? Praise God. Let's go somewhere. First John chapter 4. Thank you, Lord. First John chapter 4, starting at verse 1. Is everybody there? Let's speak it together. Beloved, 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 beloved. When he says beloved, it's a place of position. <laughs> Remember, Jesus called Judas friend. <laughs> Hello. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but do what? Test the spirits. When you see the word test the spirits, it means unmask them. Whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is a spirit of what? It's not the Antichrist. It's the spirit of Antichrist, meaning it's coming against the anointing or preventing you to flow in the anointing. Why? Because they fear the anointing. They don't fear you. They fear the anointing. But when the anointing is upon you, they fear you. You cannot cast out a devil. I want you to understand this. And, you know, because a lot of people try to cast out devil just in the name of Jesus. They won't go. Amen. If the anointing's not there, the demon's not going to submit. Amen. The anointing must always be there. Now, if the Lord has directed someone, then you know you're backed by the Lord. Amen. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Is everybody all right? And this is the spirit of the Antichrist, of the Antichrist kingdom, which you have heard was coming and is now already in the world. You are children of God. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them. What does he mean by them? These spirits. Does everybody get it? You have overcome these spirits because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. They are of the world. These spirits are of the world. Does everybody get it? Amen. They're of the world. Demons are of the world. Hmm. Therefore, they speak as of the world, and the world hears them. So people that are loaded with demons, they speak of the world, and the world hears them. We are of God, and he who knows God hears us. He who is not of God does not hear us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Again, we are to test the spirits. We know them by the fruits. One of the first fruits you're going to realize is their voice. That's why Jesus said, my people will not follow the voice of the strangers. They know my voice. How do you know someone's voice without relationship? Amen. Amen. That's how you begin to know his voice, by intimate relationship. Many people are bound by familiar spirits thinking they're hearing from God. But they're really not. 
because a familiar spirit will imitate the Holy Spirit. And an individual that's always looking for emotion, I want you to hear this. An individual that's always looking for a feeling will receive familiar spirits. Because they're living by how they what? Feel. And if they don't get a feeling, then God's not there. God's left me. God's done this. God's done that. Why don't I get touched by God? Stop looking for the touch and start looking for him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Test the spirits, the fruits of the voice, their presence. And what is the outcome of their presence? We overcome them by unmasking them. Does everybody understand that? We overcome them by what? Unmasking them. That means when you overcome, you unmask them. Then you know who they are, what you're fighting against. That way you're not beating against the air. We're unmasking their influence. Again, they speak of the world. Before you can unmask them, you must unveil yourself. Before you can unmask them, you must unveil yourself. Second Corinthians chapter 4. Remember the priests of the Sanhedrin that tried to cast out a demon out of this guy? <laughs> and they said, we cast you out out of Paul's God, Jesus. Because <laughs> they didn't know Jesus. There was no relationship. And the demon jumped on them, ripped their clothes off. They ran out butt naked. Second Corinthians 4, verse 1. Therefore, since we have this ministry as we have received mercy, we do not lose heart. But we have renounced. Everyone say renounced. The hidden things of saying renouncing will remove your own veils. Renouncing your own hidden things of shame will remove your veil. Not walking in craftiness or handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But even if our gospel is what? Veiled. It's veiled to those who are what? Perishing. Whose minds the God of this age has blinded or has controlled now. Who do not believe lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is in the image of God, should shine on them. Now I want you to understand the word believe means to follow. There's a lot of people who say, I believe, but they don't follow. So if those are the individuals that you recognize and you know that there's something evil behind them. There's an evil that's influencing them. Why aren't they following, even though they say they're believe? Because they're involved in witchcraft and don't even know it. Witchcraft is overtaking them. They're under the spell of darkness. Is everybody okay? For we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your bondservants for Jesus' sake. For it is, the God who com it is God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. Of God and not of us. See, so when you're trying to work things in the flesh, ain't nothing happening that says there'll be nothing, no glory in the flesh. None whatsoever. So we announce the hidden things of shame is the unveiling of ourselves. It is the process of unveiling. Repentance is the process of unveiling. Why? Because when we begin to get unveiled, we get into a position then where we have the ability and the authority to unmask. Again, if you're not unveiled, you won't unmask. Amen? 
Ephesians 5. I want you to understand that discipleship is the process of unveiling. Without discipleship, there's no unveiling. None. And without the anointing, there's no unmasking. Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. Verse 6. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Let no one what? Deceive you with empty words, for because of these things the what? Wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. So he's warning us. He's saying, look it, don't let anyone deceive you with a voice. Because if you accept that, you'll become veiled again. And if you become veiled again, you will not be able to unmask. For because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the what? Sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not be partakers with them. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth, finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. Some people don't want to find out what's acceptable to the Lord. They just want to know what he can give them. False entitlement. And have no fellowship with what? Unfruitful works of darkness, but rather what? Expose them. In other words, unmask them. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret, but all things that are exposed or unmasked are made manifest by the what? By the light. For whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says what? Awake. Awake. To become awake and you must become unveiled. Awake you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you Light, see then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because of what? Because of what? The days are evil, and they are evil. He says, have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness, but unmask them. Why? Because if you have fellowship with uh, 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 unfruitful works of darkness, you'll become what? Veiled. Associations bring impartations. Bad company corrupts good habits, right? Remember again, you must maintain uh, to be unveiled so you can what? Unmask. And Matthew 17, or Matthew 7, I'm sorry. Matthew 7. Thank God we're in a second whirlwind. That means we're going to see an unmasking of a bunch of sardines. (laughs) Verse 15. Matthew 7, 15. Beware of what? False prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing. That's what we call wolves in sheep's clothing. They need to be what? Unmasked. (coughs) But inwardly they are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or from figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits you will what? You will know them. You will know them. Wolves in sheep's clothing, you'll know them by their fruits. The first thing you're going to realize is their words. 
what comes out of their mouth. That's the first thing you're going to realize. The second thing you're going to recognize is their conduct, whether they react or they respond, whether they're full of pride, they're self-promoters, they're still fighting for their own lives, or they're surrendered life, whether they're submissive or rebellious, or they're still cussers, you'll know them. And this is how you're going to know them as you begin to, as you're unveiled and you begin to get more unveiled, you'll become more sensitive and discerning to unmask. And what a time we need to start unma unmasking right now. But again, the process is unveiled, unmask, and then cast out. Does everybody get it? Because you can't remove without unmasking. Second Timothy chapter 3. Jesus went through the same process. 2 Timothy chapter 3. Is everybody okay? Starting at verse 1. But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come. There will be more trouble, more heartache, more demonic influence. For men will be lovers of what? Themselves. That's because they're what? They're veiled. Lovers of money because they're veiled. Boasters. Proud. Blasphemers. Disobedient to parents. Unthankful. Unholy. Unloving. Unforgiving. Slanders without self-control. Brutal despisers of good because they're veiled. Traitors. Headstrong. Haughty lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Because they're veiled. They have a form of godliness, false religions that veil people, but deny its power. But deny its power. They deny the power of justice and righteousness. They deny the anointing. They deny the power of Christ. Is everybody okay? And it says from such people do what? Turn away. Turn away. For these are those that creep into households and ministries and businesses and churches and make captives of gullible men and women, loaded down with sins and led away with various lusts. They're always learning, but they can never practice the truth. But come to the knowledge of the truth. In other words, they're not practicers of truth because they live in an emotional life. Now, as Jamis and Jabers resisted Moses, so these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds disapprove concerning the faith because they're disconnected. Remember, the longer you're veiled, the further you'll be disconnected. But they will progress no further, for their folly will be manifested to all, as theirs also was. Again, they deny the power of justice and righteousness. They're learning, but they're not able to practice the truth. They can't put it into practice. Why? Because without the anointing, you have no power to put nothing into practice. Amen. Living an emotional life. 1 Timothy chapter 4. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Unmasking your enemy. First Timothy chapter 4. In verse 1. Let's speak it together. Now the Spirit expressly says... The Spirit expressly says, 
and the latter times, some will depart from the faith. In other words, they'll be disconnected. They'll be veiled again. Giving heed to what? Deceiving spirits or voices of demons, demonic force. And doctrines of what? Demons. Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron. In other words, they've shut off the conviction through conscience. How many of y'all know God will speak to you through your conscience? Forbidding to marry and co commanding to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth and know the truth. Again, these are spirits that attempt to deceive with false doctrines, <laughs> trying to restore the veil to prevent unmasking. Grab hold of this for a second. Demonic forces do not want you to unmask. Why? That's what deception is, isn't it? If they can stay in a place of un being unmasked, they can continue to deceive people and us. One of the things they always want to do is blind us. That's what veiling does. It blinds you spiritually. We must maintain sight. Jesus said, I come to bring them sight. And Ephesians chapter 2. Oh, happy days. In Ephesians chapter 2. Unmasking your enemy. How many of you know fear is an enemy? <laughs> fear is an enemy. In verse 1, And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. Walked under the power. We walked under the power of the prince of the power of air. In other words, that's called mind control. Where people were veiled. And they were promoting the flesh. Individuals that are veiled promote flesh. Amen. They promote themselves and they promote flesh. They promote lust. They promote the things of the world and flesh. Verse 3, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the what? Lust, Lust of the what? of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. And we're by nature children of wrath, just as the others. That's why people can't focus, because they're taken captive by these spirits, and they can't focus. Why? Because it's mind control. The veil is still there. There's the battle of putting the veil on. Has everybody got it? Fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind and were by nature children of wrath just as the others. Listen, you know you get attacked when you're trying to read the word. All of a sudden tiredness, sleepiness comes on. <sighs> but boy, you pick up any other book, poof. Yes. You pick up the Bible or when God's trying to release something to you, the devil comes to try and put sleepy time. It's a deaf and dumb spirit. 2 Timothy 4. But the anointed breaks the yoke. That's why we praise and worship first to catch the anointing. But if you didn't catch it, you have trouble. Or you didn't drink enough coffee before you got here. <laughs> uh, you didn't read Hebrew. <laughs> Verse 
Verse 4, or chapter 4, verse 1, I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who would judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Preach the word. Preach the word. In other words, unveil yourselves so you can amass someone else. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers. Oh, they'll go to places that fulfill their feeling of belief. And they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. But you be watchful in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist and fulfill your ministry or your calling and destiny. Preaching the word unveils yourself and unmasks the enemy. That's why we release the prophetic word. Amen. Hebrew 4. Hebrew. In verse 11. Unmasking your enemy. First, you got to do what? Unma unveil yourself. The enemy loves to veil us with medications. Drugs is a definite veiler. Alcohol, even nicotine, is a very strong veiler. People who smoke are veiled, they think it's okay. They're still bound. Pornography and all of those things are veilers. And they can't unmask because they're still veiled. So how can they have dominion over a devil when they can't unmask him? Hallelujah. Hebrew 4 verse 11. Let us therefore be diligent to enter that rest, lest anyone fall according to the same example of disobedience. For the word of God is what? Living. The word of God is what? Living. The word of God will unveil and unmask. And is powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division and of soul. Of what? Soul. Your mind, your will, your emotions, and your imaginations, and spirit, and joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the what? Thoughts, and intense attitude, motive, and desires of the heart. It's an unveiler. Does everybody get it? It unveils. The word of God will unveil. That's why we're to speak the word. So we eat and we become unveiled. It's like turning on a light bulb, and light comes out of your eyes and your ears, and you be glowing. Hallelujah. First John chapter two. Oh yes. First John chapter two, verse eighteen. Let's speak it together. Little children, it is the last hour, and if you had heard the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. You know, there's still too many Antichrists out there because they haven't been unmasked. Amen? People followed Obama. He's an Antichrist. Not the Antichrist, but an Antichrist. They followed him. Because they couldn't unmask them because they were still unveiled. So they followed them and voted for them. Oh, hallelujah. Verse 19. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that none of them were of us. But you have an anointing from the Holy One and you know all things. I have not written you because you don't know the truth, but because you know it, and that no lies, lies of the truth. 
For who is a liar but he who denies Jesus is the, the Christ, the anointed one, and is anointing. He is Antichrist who denies the Father and the Son. Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father either. He who acknowledges the Son has the Father also. Do you understand that when people come against the anointing, and when people deny the baptism of the Holy Spirit, it's because they're under the influence of the Antichrist. Does everybody get it? It's anti-anointing. They're under the influence of the Antichrist. And these individuals are veiled. That's why they preach once saved, always saved. Because they're still veiled. Hello. Verse 24. Therefore, let that abide in you which you heard from the beginning. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, you also will abide in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he has promised us eternal life. These things I have written to you concerning those who try to what? Value. Amen? Try to value. But the anointing which you have received from him abides in you, and you don't need that anyone teach you, but as the same anointing teaches you is concerning all things, and is true, and is not a lie, and just as it is taught you, you will abide in him or in, in the anointing. Is everybody okay? So the anointing of Christ is what unmasks. Mark 16. Mark 16. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mark 16, 16. Is everybody there? Let's speak it, let's speak it, and let's eat it. <laughs> he who believes, what's the word believe mean? Follow. Follow, and is baptized will be saved. But he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will what? Cast out demons. They will unmask them. But they first must be unmasked before they can get cast out. They will speak with new tongues. Hello. They will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly or by no means hurt them, they will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. Wow. Unmask your enemy to cast them out. You know, unmask him first. And Mark chapter 5. In other words, you can't cast out what you don't know. Verse 1. Mark chapter 5 and verse 1. Then they came to the other side of the sea to a country of uh, Gardenius. And when he had come out of the boat, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit. Okay, he had an unclean spirit. Is that a demon? Yeah. yeah. All right. Who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no one could bind him, not even with chains. Because he had often been bound with shackles and chains, and the chains had been pulled apart by him, and his shackles broken in pieces, neither could anyone tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying out and cutting himself with stones. Did you ever hear anyone cuts themselves? That's a demon. Cutters. When he saw Jesus from afar, he ran and worshipped him. And he cried out with a loud voice and said, What I have I to do with you, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? 
I implore you by God that you do not torment me. <laughs> His presence was tormenting him already. <laughs> And he said to him, come out of the man unclean spirit. Then he asked him, what is your... Was he unmasking him? Yes. And he answered, saying, my name is Legion, for we are many. Also, he begged him earnestly that he would not send them out of the country. Now, a large herd of swine was feeding there near the mountains. So all the demons begged him, saying, Send us to the swine, that we may enter them. And at once Jesus gave them permission. Then the unclean spirits went out and entered the swine. There was about 2,000. So this dude had about 2,000 demons. And the herd ran violently down the steep place into the sea and drowned in the sea. Wow. Wow. Now, did Jesus know they were going to do this? Of course he did. I want you to grab a hold of something. I don't know if you can or not, but these demons were birthed from drowning. Does everybody get it? Because they were fallen angels. They were Nephilims hybrids and offsprings that died during the flood. They drowned. And when they died during the flood from drowning, that's when their spirits became demons. And they roamed the earth. What are they looking for? A body. Because they used to have one. So Jesus actually tormented them more than they asked for. What did he do? He reminded them where they came from. What did they drown? The swines drowned. And what happened? No more body again. Does everybody get it? So he actually tormented them more than sending them back to the pit because that wouldn't have bothered them. Hello? That was their torment, reminding them that he will eventually come again. Is everybody okay? Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> All right. Matthew 12. My dad's so cool. Sure, no problem. I won't torment you. <laughs> I'll give you what you... The, he gave him what they asked for, didn't he? <laughs> they begged him to go into the piggy. And he sent him there. Dummies. Matthew 12, verse 43. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When an unclean spirit is, which is a what? A demon. Goes out of a man, he goes through dry places seeking rest and finds none. Of course he isn't going to find none. Then he says, I will return to my house from which I came. What's my house? The, how, the body they were in. I will return to my house for which I came, and when he comes, he finds it, what? Empty, Empty swept, and put in order. In other words, there was no presence of evil, but there was no presence of righteousness. They weren't filled with the Spirit. Then he goes and takes with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and they entered and dwell there. Now, and the last state of that man is worse than the first, so it shall also be with the wicked generation. Again, even a per person is filled with the Spirit and takes heed to these voices and allows them in. Amen? The worst state, the, the second, there'll be worse condition than they were before. They will return. I'm going to say they, it's not an if. They will return. Every demon that has lived in you from your birth will return. Does everybody get this? They will return. No matter what, no matter how free you are, they will return. And they will try to 
value again. Because they can't re-enter you until they value. Does everybody get it? Once they value, then they have access in you. And you might not know they're there, but everybody else will. Hello? All right. They will return to an attempt to value with temptations of flesh so they can remain, so they can remain unmasked. Does everybody get it? Does everybody understand that? So they can remain unmasked to you. They'll, they'll be masked, I guess, I don't know, I guess unmasked. What the heck is it now? It's masked, so they'll remain masked, yeah. Veiled, they'll remain hidden, yeah. So that you can't unmask them. How about that? Amen. Praise God. We'll get that straight. First Samuel 15. They will return to attempt to value with temptation of the flesh so they can remain masked. Got it. Woohoo. First Samuel. Verse, uh, chapter 15. Verse 22. Now Samuel thought he was very, uh, um, Samuel was a prophet and Saul thought he was very obedient. But he was deceived. He was actually veiled. He thought he was doing everything, but he compromised his mission. And he kept compromising his mission, and the Lord finally had enough of it. In verse 22, so Samuel the prophet went to go see Saul, and the Lord sent him. And he said to him, has the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than what? Sacrifice. See, so many people are looking at their sacrifices and still not obedient. I've done this. I've done that. I've done I, I, I. I've given up this. I've given up that. Yeah, but are you obedient to what God's telling you to do? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to heed than the fat of rams. For rebellion, everyone say rebellion. rebellion. Is as the sin of witchcraft... And stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. And because you rejected the word of the Lord, he will also reject you for being king. King is considered a warrior, and a warrior is one who unmasks. Rebellion, stubbornness, disobedience is witchcraft. It must be unveiled in your life so it can be unmasked. 1 John chapter 5. Unmasking your enemy. In verse 18. First John chapter 5 verse 18. We know that whoever is born of God does not Sin. But he who has been born of God keeps himself. And the wicked one does not what? Touch him. We know that we are of God and the world, a whole world, lies under the sway of the wicked one. And we know that the Son of God has come and given us an understanding. An understanding. He's given us understanding. What's he giving us understanding to? The reality of veiled, hello, and masked. That's associated also with binding and loosening. You can't bind and loose unless you unmask. Does everybody get it? People are trying to bind something, they don't know what the heck they're binding.
And we know that the Son of God has come and given us an understanding that we may know him who is true, and we are in him who is true in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from idols, because idols will what? Value again. 2 Corinthians 6, and we'll close here. Unmasking your enemy. First, you must be unveiled. Once your enemy's unmasked, then you may remove him. Verse 14, this is why he warns us. What does it say? Don't be unevenly yoked together with unbelievers. Again, what does the word believe mean? Follow. How many people are yoked with people that say they're Christians but not followers? This is what he's talking about. Why? Because they're veiled. You associate with people and hang out with people that are veiled, you will become veiled. unevenly yoked. People marry people that are unevenly yoked and they wonder why they have problems. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? And what communion has light with darkness? And what accord has Christ with Belial? Or what part has a believer with an unbeliever? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God, as God has said. I will dwell in them, I'll walk among them, I'll be their God, and they'll be my people. If they do what? Do what? Come out from among them. And be separated, be sanctified. That's what separation means. Sanctified, says the Lord. And don't touch what is unclean. Listen, if you're sanctified, you're not going to touch what's unclean. You may be tempted to, but you will stay away from it. Because you'll do everything you can to prevent any disconnect between you and him. Do not touch what is unclean and I will receive you. And I'll be a father to you. And you shall be my sons and my daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Therefore, having this promise, these promises, beloved, let us what? Cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit. Perfecting holiness in the fear of God. In other words, getting repositioned. So he's warning us, be careful what you touch, what you agree with. Monitor your thoughts. Monitor your feelings. Again, Jesus came to bring us sight. The greatest joy the Father has is that his children see what he sees. Jesus was the master of unmasking. He had such a unique way of doing it. So unique. And we have his spirit now. So we must maintain unveiling so we can maintain unmasking. Amen? Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We ask, Lord, that this word that you have released prophetically into the atmosphere and into our hearts and into our souls and minds, into our spirit would maintain and grow and bear fruit for your glory. That it would penetrate every part of our being and grow root so that we may be sensitive, discerning, disciplined, and consistent to serve you, honor you, and express you expose our enemy, unmask our enemy, and remove our enemy from territories and temples that they have taken hold of. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. amen. Praise God.